The latest generation of trucks have this large high definition screen on the dash, which is great. However, you're limited to the applications that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support. Wouldn't it be great if you were trying to kill some time and were parked somewhere, if you could watch a movie or get caught up on your videos? Well, that's the point behind this smart AI streaming box, which I'll talk about in a minute. I'll tell you what I like about it. I'll tell you what I don't like about it. I'll show you where to get one. And I'll also have some comments about where and when to use these. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into with this. All right, so it's just a small box, very small little device, okay? So just a microcontroller in there. And there's obviously a USB-C input into there. And I've not received any instructions. There we go. There is a, looks like we have a USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-A to USB-C cable. So that's nice. And then here's the operating instructions. So we're going to dive into this and see what to do. Okay, I can't read that. And we have English on one side. So that's, that's good. Let's take a look and see what we have to do to install this box. I'm one of those guys that just likes to dive right into using a device. Most of the time, reading the manual just slows me down and this manual had relatively poor grammar. It did take me a couple of sessions sitting in the truck to figure out how to configure this unit. So instead of filming those clumsy attempts to get it working, I'll just show you some shortcuts to get this smart AI streaming box working in a couple of minutes. Here's the unit and it needs to be plugged into whatever open USB port that you have. I would recommend that you keep your primary CarPlay or Android Auto device on Bluetooth to minimize conflicts. Before you do anything else, you need to connect your primary CarPlay or Android Auto device and go to full screen mode. This is a relatively new feature that should be enabled through a software update in all trucks. If you don't do this first, you'll have the smart AI box fighting over screen real estate. With that done, now it's time to plug in the Smart AI Box. I had already done this previously, and you can see that the Smart AI Box defines itself as an Apple CarPlay device. Go into your apps from the main menu, select Apple CarPlay, and then choose the Smart AI Box, which you have previously connected. Once you select that, the Smart AI Box will start up and display on your screen. Notice that it cannot take over the entire screen because the embedded truck functions need to be present. Here's the main menu. It's acting just like another Apple CarPlay device, even though the screen looks different. Here's the trick. This is actually an Android device trying to look like an Apple CarPlay unit. Notice the Google App Store. Let's select settings and set up the Wi-Fi. I just connected to my home access point but if you're on the road, you can connect to whatever access point that you want, such as your campground or even your mobile phone hotspot. The unit will not work without a Wi-Fi connection. Notice that round circle in the top middle of the screen. That is your navigation button to move off of the current screen. The next thing that you should set up is your Google account. You'll need this for logins and for accessing the Play Store to add applications. Okay, let's fire up Netflix. Again, I had previously set this up when I was configuring the box. So you'll need your username and password and expect a nasty gram from Netflix that you have a new login from an unidentified device. Let's listen to a few seconds from The Last Dance about Michael Jordan. I said from day one, if Phil's not coaching, I'm not gonna be a part of rebuilding. Phil should be the head coach and I shouldn't be put in a position you have to make a choice to play for another coach. Again, since this is a truck and a non-dedicated monitor, you're not going to get the entire screen 
but at least you get full width. The streaming and picture quality is quite good. And the sound is awesome coming through the Bang & Olufsen sound system. I was really impressed by how well I could stream Netflix. Now let's try something else. I'm gonna watch a video that I have plugged into a micro SD card on this unit. It's just a standard GoPro video. You'll bring up the video player app and select your video. Well, it works, but the display is not very good. You can tell that the unit is struggling to keep up with reading a gigabyte file. So it's functional, but if you were trying to watch a movie that you downloaded onto your micro SD card, I don't think you'd be happy. At least this was my experience. Who knows? I could have set it up wrong. And now let's try YouTube. Again, it's important to have this associated with a Google account so that you're logged into YouTube with your own account and not some generic YouTube front page where you're going to see the bottom shelf of the internet. Let's bring up a Rick Beato video. Unfortunately, we have to skip past ads here too. And as you can see and hear, the quality is really good. What's up everyone? Happy uh, Saturday. I'm gonna talk about the Doobie Brothers today. I've actually never, ever talked about the Doobie Brothers on my channel, which is really unbelievable. Now, as the manual says, we can go to the Google Play Store where we can download various apps to make your driving life joyful. Man, I love Chinglish. Quite honestly, I was only interested in getting YouTube and Netflix working on this box and did not try to install anything else. So is this smart AI box worth buying? If you spend a lot of time in your truck and have a lot of time to kill, you're probably already destroying your neck using your mobile phone. Streaming through the HD display and using the embedded media system of the truck is definitely a much better experience. It's not perfect, but it's very, very good once you get it working. The limited testing that I did using video from the micro SD card tells me that it's probably not going to be a great solution if you expect to do a lot of direct media off of that card. This box stays in its lane really well using the streaming services like Netflix and YouTube. And that tells me that probably, probably, if you're using another service like Vimeo or Twitch, it probably will work well with that as well once you download the additional apps. Lastly, I feel like I have to say something about this because distracted driving on the U.S. roads today is absolutely an epidemic. I mean, I'm missing lights all the time because the person in front of me in the left turn lane is looking at their phone and don't notice the green arrow until way too late. We miss the light, pisses me off, and it just, that's the least of it. It's distracted driving is extremely dangerous these days on the roads and I see it everywhere, especially sitting up high in the truck, you can see into everybody else's cabin and you can see who's doing it. And so I, I feel I have a responsibility if we're talking about this type of device, you don't wanna be using this while you're driving. And I shouldn't have to say this to anybody, but you do not wanna be using this box while you're in motion, even if it's for the kids in the back seat don't want to do this. Get them an iPad or something like that and let them stream separately. Keep the video out of your line of fire. Even if you just say, well, I'm just not going to look at it. We all know better than that. If you've been to a sports bar lately, it's impossible not to be distracted by what's above you on the TV. So please, if you're going to purchase this box, do not use this box while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so if you are interested in a device like this, if this technology would be beneficial in your life, I've included a couple of links of sources and uh, more information below, so check that out. Thanks for listening, and I will see you in the next video. Stay safe, folks.